I really, really hate these pedals. They're so small, and because they're uh, aluminum, they're super slippery when it's wet. I mean, I can't stress enough how bad these pedals are and how much of a difference it makes using decent, um, you know, BMX style flats that are bigger and have proper spikes. These are just terrible. So, even though I don't have any good pedals right now, I'm actually going to replace those with these cheap used plastic junk because even these I think are better than these just because they're bigger. Okay. That was easy. You don't have to tighten these too, too much because, you know, the crank is an aluminum piece, so you don't want to damage the threads. You know, just I just did it like this and then basically <clears throat> gave it a pretty strong squeeze and that should be enough. So, I had read that uh, the biggest reason that you'll have brake squeal on a mountain bike is because of contamination. You know, some kind of oil or anything getting on the pads and obviously these were completely soaked in oil if you watch the part one and I read one thing you can do is try to heat them up you know what it said basically is that these are uh, a porous material meaning that when they get soaked with something it absorbs into them uh, I don't know if that's completely true or not but I had read also that if you heat the pad up sometimes with a lighter or anything that you might be able to get the moisture out of it so but I also read that most of the times if that happens you just need to replace them. Uh, the shops aren't open today so I'll go ahead and try uh, heating it up with this lighter. We'll see if it works. The worst that can happen is it doesn't work and then I have to buy new ones which I'll have to do anyway so I don't mind doing this experiment because at the moment these are basically worthless. They're so loud I, I could never really ride with these. Wow, interestingly, I'm getting a little bit of bubbles and stuff here. I don't know if that's the oil or if that's... I don't know what it is. I don't know if this is a good sign or a bad sign. Let me make sure you can see that. Getting close on it. Did you see that oil dripping down there? I think it's really working. Heating it up is bringing out all that oil. Will it fix the squeaking or not? Well, I don't know about that. But it seems like it might be the right direction. Another thing I like to do is see how true the wheel is. Of course, I checked that out when I first bought the bike, and I could see that it wasn't quite perfect. But uh, I like to take a closer look at it once I get the bike home. And let's go ahead and turn it and you can see how it looks. As you can see, there is a fair amount of wobble there. So I don't think I'm going to fix that today because I don't have a truing stand. Uh, I think for now it'll be fine. I've been riding it around this weekend and. I think it's okay for the moment, but uh, definitely I want to get that taken care of at some point because that's a bit wobbly. Okay, now let's take a look at what I consider a very important part of the setup, and that's the uh, controls, the brake levers, the shifter, the shifters, where they are on the on the handlebar. So for me, the way I like it, and I think it's a pretty typical setup, is when I'm sitting high, high on the bike like normal, kind of in a just a cross country position. I like to have my hand, as far as the rotation of the brakes, I like to have it where my hands are like this and and the brake lever is a little bit lower than a straight line. So these need to go for me down a little bit. So I'm going to rotate these down, but also I think I'm going to bring them 
inbound a little bit because with the hydraulic disc brakes you only need to be using one finger typically and I feel like these are a little bit too far outward more suited for grabbing with two fingers so I'm gonna bring these in about half an inch that'll probably force the shifters to go in also the same amount and as far as where the shifters are I think they're fine like this it's a lot of it's just personal preference and feeling but generally you know you, you want to have as much area to grip the bar grip the grips as, as you can and then you want good leverage on the brakes too see as it is now if I grip where I want to grip it's not at the end of the lever so you're not going to get as much leverage as you normally would so that's why I need to bring these inbound about half an inch on each side so I'm going to rotate these down and then bring them in about half an inch so right now I'm just going to loosen them up and yeah as I said it looks like in order to move these uh, out or in I'm going to need to uh, also loosen the shifter and bring in it, it in as well So I'm just loosening everything up right now and then I'm going to take the bike off the rack and sit on it and uh, figure out where I want everything. What I usually do is set my right one first the way I want it, so about like that. Not very tight at first, just so it stays there, whoops, yeah I think that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And then what I do is I take the calipers and measure the left one the same distance inbound as the as that right one. Uh oh. Not enough room, so <laughs> okay, so I'll grab my measuring tape. Sixteen centimeters exactly to the end of the bars. This one's only 15 at the moment, so... There we go. Then I just try to eyeball it to get them... to get them uh, the same level, same rotation. And because I like to use water bottles, I'm going to put this water bottle cage on. 41 grams. <laughs>